sternum is where we're going to be. Okay. There you go. Uh, manubrium? Manubrium is right there. Manubrium. It's part up here and you can see that ridge. And they're all separate pieces until you're about 18 years old in their teeth. So manubrium, body, xiphoid process. And that part's super brittle, right? It's just a hanging bone, though. No? Not really. Mm. Just depends. But it can just have cartilage here, anyway, depending on how old you are, whether it's ossified yet or not. So it's like really sensitive, and it's like you know the sternum rub. It yeah. helps when a patient like they're rubbing out. really hard to push the skin as hard as they can against it. I mean, it's hard. It's intense, so you react. Yeah. Otherwise, if you don't feel it, then you're just paralyzed. So depending on where down, or super, supra, supra sternal, sternal notch. right there, that curve right there. So you can feel your own. So on the test, if, if that's on there, do you prefer okay. a clavis? So your clavicles are here and the clavicular notches are right there where they're resting. That angled part right there. Okay. Costal? Yes, costal notches. So your costal notches are where the, this is not real cartilage, it's plastic, but where the cartilage comes in, so these curved areas. On either his right, his left. If we ignore the head, we're okay, because that's a woman's head, but it's the rest of him. Okay, on that side. Um, the ribs? Nope, we're done right there. Oh. So now, same parts that this one has, but they're going to have a little bit of differences to be able to tell them apart. This guy doesn't have the differences. So if you don't have any differences, you're looking at a lumbar vertebra. So we start with the body. That's this big part. And the body's the weight-bearing part of your vertebral column. Yes, it's going to take the weight from the body and the weight from the ground, pushing back up the other way. And then, what's next after body? Vertebral arch. Vertebral arch. So the vertebral arch is the whole thing. I never want that as an answer. It has its own parts. Okay. So the vertebral arch, if you look at it, it has like walls coming up and then a roof. Okay. So the walls coming up, what the kink is showing, it's wrapped around one of them. It's called the pedicle. It means little foot, so it's kind of attaching it. And the pink and pedicle start with a P. And then the roof is made of the lamina. And this is lavender. This is purple. This is lavender. Lavender and lamina start with an L. And I just left a note so they don't switch them again. Okay, <laughs> so that's what they're color coded. We have plenty to add. Look at how many thoracic vertebrae we have. So we have plenty to not have to pull those, but that's what they're for. And they're already wrapped, so it makes it easy. This one's not too bad to reach, but it's better if you have a little bit more space. This one's easier to get around because I have more of a gap here. Okay. And then your lamina is kind of where my thumb and index finger are sitting, it's where the lamina is going to sit. And it's hard to get inside to some of these. There I go. So this one's got a wide lamina. Okay, so they all have those in common, except. So you have also, first of all, the hole. What's the hole called? Brain. Yeah, but what? Which one? Oh. Inter intervertebral foramen. Intervertebral foramen. Your spine's okay. gonna go all the way through that thing. And then, superior and inferior. It is transverse process. Okay, transverse. These are really super short when you get that far down. But these guys, you can see, stick out more. And these guys do, too. Okay, so they're sticking out fairly far. So transverse are coming up the side. Your spinous process comes straight out your back. It usually kind of points downward. Or when it's on one of these guys, the whole thing is just down and then sticks out. So that's a spinous process. So when you curve your back, you can see the individual vertebra kind of poke up. That's a superior particular process. You can see these flat asses on edges on the top. Mm -hmm. And it's your right, your left, as this is sitting in like you guys are. Okay, so they were sitting right there. And the inferior are what my nails are resting against pushing down. So they're facing me. These were facing you guys. So when you've got two of them together, The superior articular process is going to grab hold of the one above its inferior articular process, just like that. Okay, so that's how they do that. And you have to have two of them together to see the foramen you guys said at the beginning, which is up on the sides here. We don't want those because I'm never going to put two together. 
but know that that's what those are for so those nerves can come in your spine and wrap around your body either to your arms or your legs or come to the front of your body okay. that was it those were the four, four amino um, so our cervical vertebra now remember this guy has nothing special so put it back in cervical vertebra doesn't matter who i pull which one i pick up always have these holes on the sides okay. Okay. always 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 transverse foramina they're in the transverse process now the very and all the rest this is the first one of all it does not have a body it does not have a spinous process it doesn't have anything sticking out it's going to sit on top of the second just like that okay now the superior articular process these are these flat guys here and they don't have holes actually through them these were they were mounted up then we took them up the skulls occipital condyles rest right here and they allow this motion okay the name of this vertebra so the day of the test if i ask parts and then i say what bone is this you have to write atlas he holds the world in Greek mythology. That's your brain. It's holding the head. Okay. And then it's going to sit on the axis, this guy underneath it. So it sits, remember, like that, the head's above. And this structure that sticks up on the atlas, under it is its body. So it does have a body. And it's got a little spinous process, too. But sitting right here, this thing allows you to, nope, I don't understand you anymore. That's called the dens, D E N S. So it gives this one the up and down, the yeah, and this one no. And then after that, it's just cervical vertebra. doesn't matter which one I pull. But they have the holes on the side, cervical vertebra. Okay. And then the lumbar vertebra have all those parts that we already went over, but no holes. No holes on the side. Bigger transverse processes. And then when you start looking, you're going to have little spots. This one. A little smooth area right here and then underneath it's smooth again so this one has what are called demi facets they're not occupying the whole thing and you have the head of one rib here and the head of another rib up above okay so that's what they're for and back here on your transverse processes you have a rib spot too so that's where so you have the head of the rib there and you have a tubercle on the rib here and the neck is in between not touching any bone anything else so they come around and then they curve around to the front of your body okay. so on thoracic they always have the ribs attached so they have to have these rib spots when you get down far enough you can see it's right in the middle and you don't have much of a spinous process so they, and these are tiny they don't really bend out you can see then if they're really rounded or if they're a little bit more oval this side's more round this one's more oval but again the head of the rib just fits right there okay so the thoracic have the facets for ribs. Cervical have the holes down the sides. So you've got some major arteries coming up. They're going to join together and go through the big, huge foramen magnum to go to the brain. And then you had four arteries total. So you have those two, and you've got your carotids going through their own canal to go to the brain. Okay. So the brain gets a good blood supply. <coughs> We start with the anterior view. So this is like me facing you guys. Okay. So our first part, and if you start looking at it and the way the holes, you can see extra parts inside there if you turn it at all. So it's like you've got a back part plate and then a front plate, and they don't perfectly match up here. So there's a little bit of overlap off of each other. So these are the anterior sacral foramina, and you've got them either on the right or the left side, right, left. Okay. And then you've got these lines that cut across where you had each sacral separate when we were babies, separate sacral vertebra coming across. Those are called transverse lines. Okay. And then sacral promontory. Mm -hmm. So the sacral promontory is this ledge that kind of sticks out to be above the body. It's right there. Then we go to the back. So now it's your right, your left that you're looking at. Okay. 
So the median sacral crest is here, and it's broken a little bit there, but it's there. It's present. If you get box 27, there, these are in blue boxes, the big blue boxes for forum only. 27, that person was old, and they're flat. It is so worn off. They're losing so much bone. So don't use it. And they're few, you got this guy fused to it. It's like it hurts me to look at it. Seriously, it causes me physical pain just to look at it. That person had to be in pain. But don't use box 27. You can use the other ones, and that's where you'll find these guys. And the other, so 24, no, 25, 26, and then 28. And then you go either your left or your right. These guys are the lateral, okay, sacral crest, so median, lateral. Then where am I? You are posterior sacral for me. These holes back here. Left or right again? I'm waiting for another part. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, that's where I'm going through. There we go. So I went all the way through it. Okay, <laughs> sacral canal. So you can see it through there. What about the sacral hiatus? That is where you get. Okay, so you've got this back piece of bone and you got that front one. Mm -hmm. And you see the back one stops sooner, it takes a hiatus. Yeah. Hiatus is a break. So that edge right there is the sacral hiatus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that one person, it's way up here. It's almost halfway up. Oh, you just the, are wearing everything on 27. Yeah. You can look at it just to make me see it. <laughs> and then we have the lateral view, the sides. So this part right here is where the os coxa, so we're on either the right or the left, would come in and fit perfectly right there with its, if it belonged to this person. That's called an auricular surface, and so is this. It's kind of ear-shaped, like a curved ear. And that's what auricular means. Okay, so it's there. Auricular surface. Um, and then the coccyx. Yeah. Tailbone. Tailbone. The thorax? Nope. We just did that. That was.